is, is not involved in anything. Um, the villagers took it upon themselves to go and talk to the mine today because no one wants to mediate. The mine does not even want to listen to them. Well, thank you for that update, uh, Tsejo Faso, coming to us there from Pillensburg in Northwest. We'll be coming back to you as soon as that story develops. But for now, I have to introduce to you our studio guest that we have um, all the way from, from Salga. So thank you so much for joining us. It's such a pleasure to have you. Good afternoon, Aldrin. Good afternoon to all ANN7 viewers. A lot of issues that are coming from municipalities across South Africa, and most of them um, perhaps not being equipped enough to be able to fulfill their mandate. As Salga, how do you come into the situation? Well, we have a program uh, consistent with the mandate of Salga, and that program is around supporting municipalities, especially those municipalities that have uh, poor institutional capacity. Uh, and, and that owes to a number of uh, challenges, inability to attract skilled personnel. And um, that is very prevalent in rural municipalities in the deep hinterlands. So Salga's program is to look at all municipalities, uh, categorize their support programs, particularly around financial management. And we're very proud that between 2011 and as we close the chapter now in 2016, a number of our municipalities that otherwise in 2011 were flagged in a, in a very poor way by Ota General. We are beginning to see a critical mass of municipalities reporting uh, very encouraging audit outcomes, positive outcomes in terms of the critical mass of those who are receiving clean audits. Uh, a quantum leap that we have seen between 2011 and now that has more than uh, uh, doubled the municipalities. Municipalities that otherwise in 2011 could not produce even financial statements now all our municipalities are able to, find, to produce financial statements on time and a significant number of them are achieving unqualified audits. Now these are some of the capacity interventions that at the level of councillors and managers we are beginning to see dividends of those interventions and we are quite proud because it translates directly to service delivery that Statistic General uh, year in year out through what is normally referred to as a household survey, they are beginning to show non-financial results that indicate tangible transformation of lives of citizens and to us it's local government at work. Um, uh, Mr. Tolile George, I have to introduce you properly now. I hadn't okay. mentioned your name though, but they, just you speak of surveys, house surveys that you have been doing. There is also a public opinion polls and extensive research, you know, just from the public, and it, it alludes to the fact that there's a lack of trust between the local government, which is the bottom line where the people have a feel of, of the national government, and there's a lack, a lack of trust between those two entities. Uh, what do you think is is is, is leading to this? Well, the most democratic space uh, of citizens' interface with the municipalities is local government. Now, it is uh, not abnormal that uh, in pursuit of that implementation, we've got to measure that barometer of the relationship because local government is the only sphere of government where the definition of government enjoins the citizens. So when you look at how a municipal is defined, it is the council, which is the political arm, the administration, plus the community. So in order to encourage that relationship from time to time, we've got at municipality to, to conduct what we know, normally call community household survey to make sure that uh, through those um, findings, municipalities can implement specific intervention of improving the public participation, but also ensuring that the actual planning programs of municipalities are indeed influenced by citizens. Absolutely, and we will come back to that very point, um, okay. Mr. Okay. George. For now, we have to go to Limpopo in Vowani, where there's 13 schools that have been torched, allegedly by residents who are protesting against the proposed new municipality. N and Seven's SA Decides team, of course, was also there, and they were chased away by some miscreants among the residents when they tried to approach the community for reporting purposes. Let's speak to our correspondent now, was on the phone line, Lemohang Foke. Lemohang, thank you so much for joining us. Talk to us about what happens, uh, what has, what's happening with the protests in Limpopo and uh, how you were chased away by the residents. Thank you very much for that, Audrey. Well, this afternoon when we were trying to report on the situation that is currently happening in Buwani, we were chased away by two, um, well, the two communities that are going head to head against one another. They couldn't let us into the community. We were unable to get proper images 
of what exactly was burned down. We do know that schools were burned down, the police station was burned down, as well as a post office, amongst other things. And what we're trying to do is actually to go in there and find out what was the cause of that, and also just to speak to them about some of their concerns. But we were unable to get to that because the roads were basically blocked off and they were very violent, so we couldn't even you know, try and negotiate some kind of communication with them to find out why they're blocking the roads because we couldn't get to any way. I understand there's 13 schools that were torched to Lemohang. Do we, we have any casualties? Were there any, any arrests as to the people who are destroying uh, the property? No, at this point, uh, Audrey, we do not know if there have been any arrests. What we do know is that there were four schools that were burned down and that 40 schools were directly infected and because of that most children are not attending schools for now. Well, thank you for that report, Lemohan. I'm going to ask you to stay on the line as I come back to studio uh, to Mr. George. Vuwani Limpopo is, is literally on fire. 13 schools have been torched. Again, we see this happening over and over again. It seems residents have resorted to that kind of language when they want to be heard uh, by their councillors. Well, uh, first, and, uh, we, we, we condemn this kind of behaviour. It can only be criminal conduct. There is no other way you can characterise it. Here is uh, municipalities working collaboratively with provincial departments uh, in Limpompo and national government to build social infrastructure like schools. You build clinics, you build community halls. And in the pursuit of other uh, service delivery needs communities uh, have, then they, they resort into torturing, I mean into uh, torching these kind of facilities. We condemn that as Salga in the strongest possible word. And uh, it would be important for law enforcement agencies to act very decisively because there's no justification whatsoever that in pursuit of whatever legitimate needs, you then deprive students and children to go to school. So there's a need for us as South Africans to invest on civic education so that people appreciate the rights they have in the Constitution, that those rights also equally go hand in hand with the uh, obligations, first and foremost, to respect the rights of other citizens. So without dismissing whatever the reason could have been for that protest. There is a municipality in that area, there's a provincial department of local government, the Salga, would encourage citizens uh, that uh, uh, in, in pursuit of whatever they have, the demand for a new municipality or not, I'm aware that in that area, for instance, there is a proposed municipality for that area. So what really is happening is, is quite astonishing and I think it needs to be condemned in the strongest. So we call on all South Africans, not only in Limpombo, there may be legitimate needs of whatever nature. But it can't be that citizens must destroy the very, and, and the very now, infrastructure let's, let's go back to, to, to Limpopo yeah. um, in Vuwani and speak to Lemohang. I hope you're still on the line. What's the situation like at the moment? Are the buildings still on fire? Do we have police presence around Vuwani taking control of the situation? Um, at the moment, we do not have any burning that is going on, but we do know that authorities are on standby to make sure that uh, community members do not go into the areas that have been torched down earlier. And we do know that there was a meeting held by the community earlier today, and what was discussed in that meeting is that, um, well, they were basically being told that they are the ones that should protect their structures and their schools. And so there will be a watch by the members of the community throughout the night. Thank you for that update, Lamohang. They're coming to us uh, on the phone line from Vuwani in Popo, where there has been protests. 13 schools have been burnt down. Of course, we'll be bringing you the latest on that story as soon as it develops. But for now, we take you to the Northern Cape. The normally peaceful village of Mohojaneng near Kuruman in the Northern Cape has uh, taken to the streets to force the removal of their ANC ward councillor. Our SA Decides team is in the area and they have filed this report. Residents of Mohadeling village in Kuruman embarked on a protest last week Thursday. They lasted three days. They were protesting about the lack of service delivery and demanded that their local ward councillor step down. I was one of the protesters earlier on, but when the police apprehended us, I was not protesting. We asked for bail money and they wanted us to beg for it. They asked us for 300 rand each, but how can we get that amount when we are not working? During the protest, police were called in to restore order. Okay, uh, six people were arrested on the 29th for public violence. 
and malicious damage to property. They appeared yesterday in the Motivistat court. The case was postponed. That, that is impossible. <laughs> the police can never take it if you're not doing anything. So um, I'm not really sure why did that um, suspect say that, but everyone that was arrested was one of the people that appeared to have influence, especially when it comes to public violence. In the build-up to the local government elections, the community are saying they want to vote for credible candidates. Uh, now as community member, as a community member, I don't want to get very involved in the councillor saga. It's everyone's right to choose whoever they want. The air is an ANC stronghold, and the party officials there will need to win the confidence of voters ahead of the polls in August. I speak in capacity of branch chairperson in Maho Janeng. So far as ANC, we had no knowledge that the community was angry. With the upcoming elections, it is clear that the community of Mahojaning is divided. Who will take control? Will it be the leader or the community? This is Giovanni Matani reporting for SA Decides, Mahojaning Kurman in the Northern Cape. Thank you for that update there, Giovanni. Coming to us from the Northern Cape, and still with me in studio is uh, Mr. George. He is the CEO from Salga. Mr. George, thank you for staying with us once again. We have residents who have gone to the extent of chasing away their councillors because they've lost trust in their leadership skills. As Salga, how are you building capacity and developing leadership in the municipalities that, uh, that you support? Well, uh, firstly, I must clarify the issue of uh, what is happening. You will see there will be a trend uh, not surprising right across because it is a season where political parties now are busy finalizing their election lists in terms of nomination of candidates and so on. So from time to time you're going to see sporadic events where candidates will be rejected or people will be rejecting a serving councillor and so on. We hope that it will subside very soon. Uh, beyond the season of the month of May where political parties are doing that. So, so essentially it is politically motivated? In, in the main, it's largely politically motivated. I have no doubt around that. But what we are doing is that... And, uh, unfortunately, I'll have to cut you off, Mr. George. We okay. have run out of time. I appreciate okay. your analysis. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. We have to go to the Western Cape now in the Matsikana municipality in Fretendal. And they're fighting the good fight for the unemployed and the unskilled in their jurisdiction. The council runs a business development center, and they have begun employing the young and unskilled workers from that area. Let's take a look. <laughs> 